Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Kuhn. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Connecticut Orthopedic Institute. First, I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to have a discussion on knee cartilage injuries from cartilage repair to joint replacement surgery. Throughout our discussion today, I'd like to accomplish several goals. The first is to identify the symptoms that you may encounter when you have knee cartilage injuries. The second would be to discuss specific treatment options for your individual injuries. I like to identify treatment options for you before surgery to hopefully avoid surgery and when required progress to surgical treatment options. This will include a discussion of the state-of-the-art technologies and procedures that can hopefully halt or delay your disease progression. As a way of background, I'd like to discuss the spectrum of disease. I think it's first important to understand some of the terminology you may hear in the doctor's office as related to your knee injury. A cartilage injury is really a focal defect in the protective surface of the knee. Think of it like a pothole in the road. Once the road starts to break down, a pothole forms, the integrity of the road is no longer the same. Adjacent to the cartilage in your knee is another structure called your meniscus. These are a C-shaped cartilage disc which act as shock absorbers. When these are torn, these cause pain and we'll discuss these further. You often hear this discussion and the term called arthritis. What is arthritis? Well, arthritis is really diffuse and broad loss of cartilage within in your knee. It also accompanies inflammation. This is what results in pain. The true definition of arthritis in your knee or when the knee breaks down is what we call arthrosis. And when you go to the doctor's office, they may talk about narrowing of the joint or spur formation in your knee or thickening in the knee. And this is truly what defines arthritis. We use many terminology to discuss what arthritis is. You may hear it referred to as degenerative arthritis, hypertrophic arthritis, degenerative joint disease, or symptomatic or simply osteoarthritis. So in order to visualize this, if you look at the image on the left, you'll see that the cartilage is smooth at the end of the knee, depicted by the white. If you look at the image on the right, you'll see that as this disease progresses, you'll see that red area of exposed bone, some cracks next to it, and this is really the progression of disease. And depending upon how much is involved, depends whether we can repair your cartilage or whether you need a joint replacement surgery. So the image you're seeing now depicts the progress of cartilage breakdown of the knee. In figure A, we'll see the cartilage appears soft, which is normal, a nice, firm, protective surface. As it further degrades, moving on to figure B, we'll see some cracks within the cartilage. In C, we'll see that starts to be a superficial pothole. And then in figure D, finally, we see that full pothole within the knee, and that's complete loss of the cartilage surface. Frequently, patients will ask, how did this occur? And I tell everybody, there's many ways this can occur either traumatic with an injury, or really you can't identify a source. And really that depends upon the age of presentation. Younger athletes usually have an injury. More senior athletes, less of an injury. Usually the pain is either localized at one spot on the knee, or it just hurts all over. Other, other symptoms that occur are pain, swelling. My knee is swollen. I feel fluid. I can't bend my knee, and it feels just stiff. When the meniscus is torn or injured, often patients will describe mechanical symptoms. Well, what are those? My knee locks. It catches. I can't bend my knee fully. Those are signs and symptoms that we get concerned about, that there's a tear in the cartilage or a tear in that meniscus. I'm limited in my activities. I really just can't do what I normally do. And, Doc, this just really hurts at night. These are very common symptoms and complaints that patients will report when they have cartilage or knee arthritis symptoms. So what do you do if you start to have these symptoms? Well, my first course of action is conservative care. Certainly, stuff you can do at home. Rest your knee, modify your activities. Anything that's causing the pain, try to back off a bit. Ice your knee. It's exceedingly important to try to get that swelling and inflammation down. That will help with your symptoms. An ace wrapper or a compression sleeve can help. If you have an off-the-shelf brace, you can try that as well. If these aren't working, then certainly an early course of physical therapy through your primary care can help to decrease your symptoms. And when all else fails after four to six weeks, it's probably time to see the orthopedic doctor to see if x-rays or other studies are needed. So when everything you try to do at home fails, what, what do we do next? Well, when you come to the doctor's office, 
there are other treatments we can try before we think about surgery. One of those treatments involves a cortisone injection, a steroid into your knee. This can really help to decrease the inflammation and swelling in your knee and hopefully restore your function. An alternative treatment, if that's not working, again, a non-surgical option involves visco supplementation. You may hear this referred to as a gel injection. And this works by just a slightly different mechanism in your knee, but to try to provide some cushioning and comfort and support for your knee, again, to alleviate the symptoms. Alternative treatments exist, including stem cell injections like PRP or bone marrow injections to try to help with these symptoms as well. PRP is a biologic product obtained from your blood. We draw blood from you. We separate out the blood products from the blood cells to the platelets. The platelets are really the healing potential in the body. So we can take these platelets, separate them, inject them back into your joint or into your tendon to really try to help the body naturally heal. Here is the PRP process. First, blood is drawn from your arm. This blood is then placed into a centrifuge or separating device, as you can see. It separates out the components into different layers, and the platelet portion of that is injected back into the area of interest. A lot of patients are finding good benefits from PRP. Certainly, as we discussed, it's easy to obtain, it's easy to administer, and it's done right in the office, and hopefully we avoid a surgical procedure. Obviously, some of the cons, there's not universal improvement with all patients, and it's generally not covered by your insurance. One of the things to remember is it won't regenerate the cartilages lost, but it'll help with the healing process with the tissues around that. Another stem cell option includes a bone marrow aspirate. Here in the office, we can attain a small sample of bone marrow. This marrow contains those healing platelets as well as other cells that help your body to heal and regenerate tissue. Like the PRP, we then aspirate these contents and inject them back into your knee. If all these treatments and procedures we've done have failed, what's next? It's important to understand that cartilage defects of the knee have a very limited ability to heal. The bigger the defect, the bigger the problem. Think of it like that pothole in the road. A small pothole becomes bigger, more collateral damage occurs. So what is our goal? Our goal is to restore your function and to prevent further deterioration of your knee and progression to arthritis. Discussing surgical procedures, the most commonly performed initial treatment is a knee arthroscopy. This involves, as you'll see on your picture, a camera inserted into the knee through a very small incision, arthroscopic instruments introduced as well. Once inside your knee, we'll see images of the knee and how it appears. The picture on the left shows a normal appearing knee, where the picture on the right shows loss of cartilage and loss of that protective surface with a meniscal tear, the problem that's causing your pain. One treatment for the cartilage injury you saw on the knee is what we call microfracture. This involves, through the camera and instruments, making tiny holes within the knee to allow a scar cartilage to form. Think of it like the pothole in a road. The pothole in the road is filled with a filler, which is not quite as durable as the initial road, but certainly better than a pothole helps to protect your knee and provide longevity to your knee. If you look at the image on the bottom right of your screen, you'll see an illustration of the microfracture technique. This involves, through the camera and a few small incisions, creating tiny holes within the knee to allow a scar cartilage to occur. The top right picture shows an actual arthroscopic photograph of this procedure. An alternative treatment option for larger lesions includes what we call an osteochondral autograft transplantation. It's more commonly referred to as an oats. Think of this as a cookie cutter technique where we take a cookie cutter of some cartilage and bone that are diseased out of your knee and replace it with a cookie cutter of cartilage and bone from a good area of your knee to restore the function and integrity of the diseased area. Pictured here, you'll see several images of the oats technique. On the left, you'll see an arthroscopic view through the camera of a transplanted area. Here you'll see several small round donor sites. A newer technique on the right side of your screen in the illustration shows a similar area resurfaced with a single plug technique. Looking at the OATS procedure, there are several benefits to the procedure. One of the benefits of an OATS procedure is that it involves a bony transplant. Bone heals to bone. Once bone heals to bone, it's as solid as it was before the injury. This allows us to have full motion of the knee immediately with a solid reconstruction at the time of surgery. 
One of the downsides of the OATS procedure is that we have to take bone from somewhere. We have to take it from either your knee or donor source. Oftentimes this requires a slightly larger incision to put this device in place. One of the newest and most exciting advances in cartilage repair involves a Macy procedure. This involves harvesting cartilage cells from you, expanding them, and then re-implanting them in your knee. This was first approved in the U.S. in 2017, and I've been doing it ever since. Let me show you how this works. So if you look at the illustration there, in your initial arthroscopic surgery, I'll harvest a very small cartilage biopsy with several tiny plugs. I'll send them off to the lab, at which time they'll expand those from several thousand to many millions of cells. Those cells are then placed on a sheet, a membrane, and that membrane is sent to us for your second surgery to allow us to grow new cartilage cells within your knee. So here's the final product. If you look at the left, you'll see that patch. That thin patch of material contains several million of your cartilage cells. We then, in surgery, take those and re-implant them into your knee. So where are we going from here? Currently, this technique generally involves an open incision. I've been able to pioneer a technique where we can do this all arthroscopically through the camera. So now that we've discussed cartilage injuries, we can't neglect the meniscus. The meniscus is that C-shaped cartilage disc within your knee that provides stability as well as a shock absorber capability. What happens when you injure your meniscus? Usually it occurs with a turning or twisting event. Most patients will describe pain, swelling, and locking. And an MRI will really define the injury to the meniscus. During arthroscopic surgery, we're able to really assess the degree of the meniscal tear. The image on your left shows the joint and shows that tear in the meniscus. And our goal is to try to fix this. And so we either fix it by removing the part that's torn, or if you look at the picture on your right, place some small stitches arthroscopically through the camera at your time of surgery to aid in its healing process. If you look at the images on the screen, you'll see the meniscal transplant in place. It looks like a normal meniscus. We'll see on the pictures on the right where the meniscus was placed and sewn in place to allow it to heal and restore the protective effect of the meniscus to your knee. In summary, meniscal transplant surgery involves an outpatient surgery. It restores the shock protector of your knee, protects the cartilage, and improves the stability of your knee. What do we do when all this fails? Other options for your knee include joint replacement surgery. When the knees progressed and the tires are worn out, we can replace those with new tires. This is a joint replacement. There are many options and many types of joint replacements that will be done which are specific to you and your knee injury. The good news is these can decrease your pain, improve your function, and certainly improve your quality of life. There's not just one joint replacement for all patients. The type of replacement is determined by what you need. If you look at the images, we'll see on the left, we'll see what we call a partial knee replacement. This knee is replaced only in the area where the disease is affected. On the right, we'll see a complete knee replacement when the whole knee is worn out. And then finally, when the kneecap is worn out, we can do what we call a patellofemoral replacement. These are all customized to you, your disease, and your individual needs. One of the most exciting newer advances in joint replacement surgery is robotic surgery. What does this involve? This allows myself, the surgeon, to have an additional tool during surgery to help balance and align your knee replacement to its optimal position. Yet another treatment option for your knee, depending upon your individual needs and the needs of your knee, include custom replacements. This can be as simple as creating custom guides for your knee to help make sure you have ideal balance and alignment of your knee, to custom implants based upon any knee deformity. The science advances are there to help us to give you the best possible outcome. In summary, as we've discussed, there are multiple treatment options depending on your and your knee's individual need. As you can see in the illustration here, there are multiple combinations and multiple types of replacements that can be performed and are done solely based upon the needs of your individual situation. Thank you for joining me today. Just remember, you have multiple options and we're here to help you with those. I'm Dr. Michael Kuhn from the Connecticut Orthopedic Institute at MidState Medical Center. Thank you.